How's it going everyone, it is Pangino here and in this video we're going to be covering hidden NVIDIA settings, tweaks and optimizations in which you can apply to practically any NVIDIA graphics card for a significant performance improvement. This will not only increase FPS but will also aim to reduce input latency and unlock a few more features with inside of your graphics card in which you can fine tune for your individual settings to optimize the GPU for the games in which you play. All optimizations shown in this video can be reverted very quickly and easily if you just want to try them out. That's completely fine, quick, simple and easy to do. And as always if you do enjoy this video please you consider leaving a like and a comment for the YouTube algorithm as it does help me out tremendously. With all of that and more coming straight after a message from today's video sponsor. Tired of seeing the Activate Windows watermark? Built a new PC or just want to own Windows at a major discount? Head over to WhoKeys to purchase a Windows 10, 11, Home or Pro OEM key at a major discount. Make sure to use code PAN20 for a further 20% off at checkout where you can use a safe and secure payment method such as PayPal. Once your key is delivered, simply input the key inside of Windows and boom, you're now completely activated and own Windows forever. You'll now have access to all features and no more watermark. Thanks again to WhoKeys for sponsoring today's video. So to start off with the optimizations, we're first of all going to be jumping into the NVIDIA control panel to enable a few quick settings. For this, right click on your desktop, hit show more options, and open up inside of the NVIDIA control panel. And this will work on both Windows 10 and 11. We're first of all going to be navigating to adjust image settings with preview. We then want to ensure that the middle option titled use the advanced 3D image settings has been selected in the middle, then select apply. With that set up and out of the way, navigate over to manage 3D settings in the top left hand side. Before we change any other settings, settings with inside of NVIDIA, we quickly need to decide if we're going to be using G-Sync or if we're going to be disabling this. We need to decide that at this point in the video as it's going to change some of the settings we're going to set later on, depending on whether or not we've enabled G-Sync or turned it off entirely. For my personal preference, I would recommend turning off G-Sync for most people watching this video. If you tend to favour performance and FPS over the best settings possible with inside of a game and you like to have higher frame rates, I would definitely avoid using G-Sync unless you are getting terrible performance on most games you play. If you're able to stay at close to or above your monitor's refresh rate at most times whilst you're playing most of your games, I would recommend not using G-Sync as you can actually lower input latency not using it and provide yourself with a snappier feeling game. For your monitor technology to turn off G-Sync or enable this, go to monitor technology, go to the drop down menu where you'll then have G-Sync or G-Sync compatible and you'll then have fixed refresh. If you're not using G-Sync and you're going to be disabling it, select fixed refresh. If you're going to be using G-Sync, select it with inside of it. I'm going to be disabling G-Sync so I'm going with fixed refresh. With G-Sync then enabled or disabled, we need to enable a quick option with inside of NVIDIA control panel to enable advanced features. For this, navigate up to the top to the desktop tab. Select this, then select the option for enable developer settings. You'll then see a new tab on the left hand side titled manage GPU performance counters. Select this option, then what you want to do is select allow access. Once that's selected, select apply. Your screen will go black for a few seconds and it may flicker a few times whilst this setting is applied. This is completely normal, just wait a few seconds. Then select yes. This option should then be enabled and we can continue on. Head back over to manage 3D settings on the top left hand side and we can start off with our first optimization. For the best results possible throughout this video, ensure that you can apply as many optimizations shown in this guide as possible to ensure that at the end of the video you have the best results possible. As just checking one or two of the settings in this video may only provide a minor performance upload for our first optimization in manage 3D settings, then click on program settings. Go to the right hand side to add. Select add. We then need to navigate down to the bottom right to can't find a program and click browse. We then need to navigate over to this PC on the left hand side. Navigate down to our local disk C drive. We then need to proceed to scroll down to the Windows folder and inside of Windows simply scroll all the way down to the bottom to the EXEs and we're going to be looking for explorer.exe. Select explorer.exe select open. We're then going to scroll down until we find power management mode. You will notice that power management mode has been manually overridden by NVIDIA settings to be set to adaptive. So we're going to go to power management mode, click on this option, and we're going to select this to either optimal power or prefer maximum performance. Select the option, select apply. We then need to apply that same optimization to one other application. For this, we're going to go to the add section once again. Go down to the bottom right to browse. This time inside of the Windows folder, we're going to proceed to go down to System32. Once you're inside of the System32 folder, head up to the top right to the search bar. Inside of here, we're going to be searching for DWM then press enter. You should then be able to find the dwm.exe. Click and select this, then select open. Select add selected program at the bottom. In some cases that could freeze the NVIDIA control panel. If it does, exit out of the control panel, reboot, then go back in and repeat this step. Once again, scroll down to the power mode. We're going to change this to either optimal power or prefer maximum performance. Once that's been selected, select apply. 
Once those two optimizations have been set for both programs, head back over to global settings once again. Inside of global settings this time, scroll all the way down to the bottom and we're looking for power management mode. We're then going to set the power management mode for the global settings to match the power management mode we set earlier. So either set this to optimal power or prefer maximum performance. Once that's been selected, once again, select apply and OK. For the next optimization, we'll need to download the NVIDIA Profile Inspector tool, which is basically a much more advanced version of the NVIDIA Control Panel, where you can dive into practically every single setting. For this, you'll need to navigate inside of the description down below and use the link, or do a quick Google search, head over to the Releases section. Inside of Releases, click on the top release, which will be the latest at the time of you watching this video. Click on the number, scroll down, then select the NVIDIA Profile Inspector.zip. Once this is finished downloading, select Open File, drag the contents onto your desktop, exit out and close out of your web browser. Go ahead and double click on NVIDIA Profile Inspector.exe. Before we change any settings with inside of this program, I'm first of all gonna say, you should only follow the settings shown in this video, as if you deviate off and start changing things around randomly, if you feel they might be beneficial, you could actually run into issues and slowdowns on your GPU. If at any point you find that you want to reset any settings in which you've set up or you feel you might have accidentally clicked something you shouldn't have, it's incredibly simple and easy to do. At any time, if you want to restore, head up to the top to the green NVIDIA logo, which will be titled Restore Current Profile to NVIDIA Defaults. Click this option, it will then completely reset absolutely everything, then go to the top right hand side to apply and everything will be back to stock. Do bear in mind though that if you do restore your profile settings with inside of NVIDIA Profile Inspector, this will also reset your NVIDIA Control Panel settings. We're going to be heading down to the G-Sync option. Now again, if you enabled G-Sync earlier and you want to keep this on, do not turn off these settings. But if you turned off G-Sync earlier, definitely make sure that you are disabling the following settings as you'll see a performance improvement from doing this as we will be completely disabling G-Sync from running. For G-Sync application mode, double click, set this to off. For G-Sync application requested state, Double click to change the option, go to the drop down menu and set this to disallow. Application state is going to be set to disallow, global feature off, and G-Sync global mode off. Once we've set up those application settings for G-Sync, the following options will now apply to every single person watching, regardless if you're using G-Sync or not. Maximum pre-rendered frames. Go to the drop down menu for this and we're going to be setting this to one. Double clicking on preferred refresh rate and setting this to highest available, then navigating down to vertical sync. So we're going to be setting this to force off. We're then going to proceed to scroll down until we find NVIDIA predefined FXAA usage. Go to the drop down menu for this and set this to disallow. Proceeding to scroll down further until we find prevent anisotropic filtering. My recommended setting for this is to set this to on to stop your GPU using anisotropic filtering. Do bear in mind though that this is one of the few settings if you turn this off, your games will look slightly worse, but I prefer the performance uplift from this. This. Proceeding to scroll down until we find CUDA Force P2 State. Head to the drop down menu for this, double click on the option, and we're going to be forcing off the P2 State as this is a power saving state for your NVIDIA GPU. With that completed, we're then going to scroll down until we find the other section. Scroll down to midway of this until you have most of the options on your screen. Inside of the other section, proceed to scroll down to the middle of this section until you find Memory Allocation Policy. Inside of this section, we're going to go to the drop down menu and we're going to be setting this to Policy Moderate. Once that's completed, head up to the top right hand side to apply settings and all of those settings and optimizations have then been set up but there are a few advanced options we can enable with inside of here in the unknown or hidden section for those of you that have a GPU that supports resizable bar. This is typically only available on RTX based GPUs currently and I'll have all of the current GPUs that are supported by rebar listed on screen now. To have Nvidia rebar enabled, you will also need a supporting CPU, a supporting motherboard. You'll then have to make sure that your GPU BIOS is up to date, your motherboard BIOS is up to date and ensure that the resizable bar options have then been selected in the motherboard. Head into the Nvidia control panel, head to the bottom left hand side, click on system System information. Click on your GPU, then on the details section, scroll down where you should then be able to see rebar or resizable bar. If this says yes next to it, that means that resizable bar is enabled and ready to go. If it says no, this means that it is supported, but you need to enable it in your motherboard's BIOS. So if you have got resizable bar enabled, head back inside of the NVIDIA profile inspector, this time go to the top in the middle, find the magnifying glass icon, select this button. You should then have a bunch of other settings which open up in the bottom, underneath the unknown tab. Inside of here, we can actually enable rebar support for every game on our PC. Now setting up rebar on some games can be absolutely fantastic and can net you anywhere from a 5 to 20% performance increase across the board. But on some esports titles or just some older games in general, or some games may even see a slight performance decrease. So from my personal opinion, I would recommend setting up and testing rebar on an individual game basis 
If you want to set up rebar on every single game across the board, in the top left hand side make sure that profile is set to global driver profile. If you want to set this up for an individual game, head into the drop down menu, scroll down and select the game in which you want to force rebar enabled on for. So if you wanted to force rebar on GTA 5, you would just simply click on GTA 5, the profile would change. You can then enable the following settings, what we're about to change, just for GTA 5. But do remember, you will have to reapply this setting for every game you want to force this on. To enable and force rebar on for all games, you want to navigate down to the unknown section, and we're then going to be looking for the following profiles. F00BA, F00BB, and F00FF. You can usually tell these currently because they all have 19 profiles available with inside of them. But if this changes in the future and there's more or less profiles added to them, just make sure that the number string on the left hand side matches. So for F00BA, we're going to go to the drop down menu and we're going to set this to 1. For F00BB, and again, we're going to set this to 1. And finally, for F00F, F, go to the drop down menu for this, and we're going to be setting this to number four. Once those settings have been set up, head to the top right hand side and select apply changes. Of course, at any time, if you want to come back with inside of here and turn off resizable bar, go to the setting in which you changed, click on the drop down menu, then on the right hand side, you'll see a small NVIDIA logo to restore this value. Click on that button, that will then change it back to zero. We then need to navigate down to the next profile, click on the NVIDIA button to restore it, then once again, go to the top right and apply. Again, I would definitely recommend doing a before and after benchmark as there is no one size fits all when it comes to resizable bar. To close out of this video, we're then going to ensure that MSI or message signal interrupts has been enabled on our GPU. Very quick and easy to turn on and off and I would recommend it to anyone watching. For this, navigate inside of the description down below or do a quick Google search for MSI Utility V2. Once you're on this page, scroll down to the middle section, you'll then have V2 and V3 options of the program available to download. I prefer V3, but V2 works fine. Click on the media file link with inside of here, then select download, select open, exit out the browser, drag this onto your desktop. We're then going to right click on MSI Utility, run this as an administrator, more info, run anyway. Head into yes. We then need to find your GPU which you're currently using on the left hand side. For me that's an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1063 gig, but this will work on any GPU. Head over to the MSI box next to this and ensure that MSI mode has been selected by clicking this. Once it is checked, head over to the right hand side to interrupt priority for this and set this to high. Do not be tempted to change settings for any other devices with inside of here, we're only adjusting the GPU. With those settings set up, go to the top right hand side, select apply, and that is it for our hidden NVIDIA settings and optimizations in this video. To close out the videos, we can now cover some benchmarks of these optimizations, both enabled and disabled on an RTX 3080 on a fully optimized system. The GPU has been kept at stock clocks for this and is only using the settings in which were shown in this video, starting off with Apex Legends for our battle royale pick for the benchmark. In the training area, in the exact same spot, over a 30 second run, we were able to achieve 181 average FPS with the optimizations enabled, compared to 169 with them disabled, showing a relatively healthy increase on an already incredibly optimized system where further gains could be had on lower end and less optimized PCs. For our ultra high FPS benchmark, we're using CSGO where we didn't actually see a noticeable FPS increase in the Dust2 benchmark. This could be due to how high end the GPU is and how CPU bound CSGO is. Moving on to Forza Horizon 5 for our non-ray traced triple A pick. Here we can see a noticeable FPS increase of around 10% or so. And again, these results should be further exaggerated on lower end systems or less optimized systems. For our triple A ray traced pick, we're using Cyberpunk 2077 at 4K completely maxed out for a worst case scenario for this on a AAA title, and also to see how these optimizations behave when ray traced. As you can see from the top two benchmarks, these with the optimizations on, there is an ever so slight FPS increase, but there is nothing particularly noticeable. But most noticeable, we didn't see any FPS drops on any of the titles in which we benchmarked, so you'll either see anywhere from 10 to 20% FPS increases on the games where it does work, or the games where it doesn't, typically you will see no FPS drop whatsoever. If you do have any other tips, tricks, or hidden settings in which you personally use on your system, make sure to let me know in that comment section down below, as we can always get a fantastic discussion going on down there, and there you guys have it. If you have enjoyed this style of video and enjoy tweaking around with your system and getting the best performance possible, consider checking out the two videos on screen now.